I just bought these brand new Derwent push button water brushes. I'm really excited to try them out. As you can see, they come in a wide variety of different tip sizes and I'm really interested to see how the push button works. So I'm gonna open the package and fill these with water. I'm Julie, a fan Balzer, and in this video, I'm gonna be exploring these brushes for the first time. So I certainly don't have all the answers. I'm a beginner at it. And I'm always just trying to see what my expectations are versus what actually happens. So if you enjoy this video, be sure to subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up. And of course, I'd love to connect with you over on my blog at balzerdesigns.typepad.com. So I'm about to go fill these, but it took me a few minutes to figure out where they unscrew. So just so you know, they unscrew above the blue push button. So water brushes are one of my favorite things to use with watercolors, especially if I'm painting out somewhere that I don't have access or I don't wanna have water rolling around. This is a traditional water brush that I'm used to using. This one's from Sakura. And I like this as a travel water brush. It's very small. This is my at-home watercolor palette, but this one fits in my pocket, which is great. And, um, you know, it has a relatively pointy tip there, but you can press it down to create a wider swath. And essentially, as you can see, there's water in the barrel and you kind of squeeze the barrel as you want water to come out of the tip. Let's see if I can't get some, there you go, to drip on out. Now, the concept behind these Derwent water brushes, as far as I understand from what I read, is that instead of sort of having to squeeze the barrel back here, they have a push button that releases a more controlled amount of water. So this is really a stiff tip right now. I think it has the glue in it, you know, that all brushes are sent out with. So I'm just sort of softening it up a little bit with my fingers here. So right now this tip is totally dry. It's totally dry. So let's have an if I, ooh, I don't know if you can see that, but when I squeezed the button, water sort of ran into this area. Ooh, and now the water comes out. It's much more plentiful, obviously, than the other water brush, which is interesting. And then the hope is as you paint, you're not accidentally, because this is rigid, you're not accidentally squeezing more water out, which is what happens sometimes. So let's do a really quick comparison. Um, I've got stuff stuck to my tag. So I'm going to use this water brush and we'll use the same color for everything and why not use pink when you can. So here you go. I'm going to squeeze out a little bit of water now that this is dry. Squeeze out a little bit of water and there you go. Okay, I believe that this pink paint has probably dyed this tip because it's not really coming off and that's fine. The water brush isn't harmed. I don't think it'll transfer. Now let's try with the Sakura. So again, I'm going to squeeze some water out, go into my paint, give it a scribble. Hmm. This tip holds a lot more water than that one did because it's still wet and it's still going. Interesting. Not at all the results that I was expecting, but you can see that. Okay. Let's keep trying. How about doing a little bit of wet into wet? So I'm gonna squeeze my button and get some water down into that. I should also mention that this water brush was like four times as expensive as the other one. Okay, so that's partially I think why I was expecting something different or maybe people want a less wet tip. I don't know. So wet into wet, there you go. And then maybe a little bit on the edge here, a little bit there. Let's see when it runs out of gas. So right here, I don't have any color left. It's still leaving a little bit of water behind. The tip is still wet. And let's do the same thing now. A little wet into wet. I guess it's not so wet there. I can do a dab here, I guess, of wet to see. And then let's see when this runs out of gas. So I am not a watercolor artist and I certainly don't use watercolor in the way that a lot of watercolor artists do. So I'm a little bit surprised that this holds on to the pigment a lot longer than this does. And I don't know if it's a desirable quality for watercolor artists that it lets go of the pigment. But let's flip this over and try out. Let's see if I were to do a quick you know, a little watercolory leaf, push my button. Oops, but I wanted to kind of smush around and have just be a soft little guy here. 
I guess because it doesn't have continuous water and it has the push button, it is a slower, like it goes dry much faster. Interesting. Okay, and here, let's try it with the other water brush. So, I feel like I really like, I'm surprised, the Sakura water brush more, but let's try out the different tip sizes before I make a judgment. Okay, push, ooh, I just created a fountain. I guess I don't need to push that hard. Get some more water into that tip. Woo. This is a lot of water. Okay. You know, I was gonna use the same brush for everything because I'm so used to that, but I just realized I have all these different tip sizes. Oh, I like that big one. Let's try the itty bitty guy. You know, the more I work with this, these brushes, the more I realize that I think the issue may be that I'm not working on watercolor paper. I'm working on a tag and it just absorbs the water differently. So I'm gonna grab some watercolor paper so that I can give this a fair test. But I do really like how much water there is in there so that you can get those splats. And um, yeah, it's cool. I think that everybody has to explore uh, tools for themselves because you have to figure out with how you use things and how the kind of you know process that you enjoy if they work for you. It's so easy to watch videos of other people using them and think that if we buy those tools that we'll be able to create like them. But the fact is, you know, everybody uses tools differently. Again, we're all individuals. So that's why I tell people like, I'll always give you my honest opinion. Ooh, dry brush technique with a water brush. I've never been able to do that because the tip is always wet. Interesting. Until I squeeze water and maybe change that. Oh yeah. Interesting. So you really can control the amount of water, which is really kind of cool. Anyway, as I was saying, you know, everybody is unique in terms of what they like, what their comfort is, all that kind of stuff. So take everything through a filter of you. That's what I always say. Filter it through your you-ness. Okay, I'm going to go wet into wet here. Get that beautiful bleed that I love. And then a little wet over dry. Obviously, the drier the brush gets even into wet, it's bleeding a little bit less. go ahead and do a little bit with my old water brush just to sort of mentally compare and contrast. It definitely feels like on watercolor paper too I have a more continuous stream of color and water with my old uh, Sakura brush. So far, these are not enthralling or exciting me. So let me know from all of you out there who ha might have these Derwent push button brushes. Educate me. What am I missing on what makes these uh, a big improvement over the little regular water brush? Thanks so much for watching. For more tips, tricks, and tutorials, be sure to sign up for monthly membership over at balzerdesigns.com. Subscribe to this YouTube channel for lots of free inspiration, and I hope to see you again.